All right, what is up, gamers in the internet? I am SuperViber T302, and this is going to be Super Mario 64 70 Star CCCUS. And if you're wondering what the heck that means, uh, don't worry, I will explain everything. So uh, I assume we're ready for a countdown, so let's just go ahead and get started in a three, two, one, go. So, you're probably wondering what the heck CCC list means. It stands for Coinless, Capless, Cannonless. So what this category entails, basically, is um, no coins of any kind can be collected, which includes yellow, red, and blue coins. Um, no cap switches can be pressed, and uh, no cannons can be opened or used. And so this does put a great limit on the amount of stars I can do. In fact, I believe non-tasked there are only 75 possible stars you can get. And a couple of those are just too slow to be worth it for speedruns. And this category also still abides by re regular 70 star rules. So there is no um, skipping starter requirements, no backwards long jumping, and no MIPS clips. So we've got uh, the standard Laikichu skip at the start of the run here. Just long jump off the left edge of the bridge to skip the Laikichu cutscene. Fairly precise. So our first trick it, trip is to going to go to bob on Battlefield, which is obvious, the obvious choice since that's the only place we can access without any game-breaking glitches. Now this first trick is I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it's a trick you normally only see in regular 70 star. Um, it's called Island Hop, and I'm only gonna attempt it once for the sake of the marathon. I'll attempt an easier strat if I don't get it. It requires a first frame wall kick into a very precise double jump dive to get to the floating island capless and catalyst. I didn't make it. I, I didn't land for the double jump dive, so instead I'll do this trick. So this is a bomb clip. This is also a pretty classic trick. So you actually have to do bomb clip in this category because there's a red coin on top of the chain chomps post, and you can't ground pound it without accidentally grabbing the post. So I'm just going to do an easier strat for island hop, um, where I just long jump from the top of the mountain, so... I'm just going to take the regular path you'd see uh, speedrunners take for the big bottom star, because I don't really want to spend too much time bailing that strat. So uh, to kick up slopes like this, you just use uh, A, you just have to hold A and tap B. There's many different ways to climb up slopes in this game. So uh, I guess I can kind of go over some stuff. So the stars I can't really do, obviously since this category prohibits coin collecting, um, that automatically rules out um, all red coin stars and 100 coin stars because there's no currently known glitches that allow us to collect those stars without first collecting coins. So that automatically rules out 38 of 120 possible stars. One of the stars is Snowman's Lost His Head in Snowman's Land. Um, you cannot do that star in a full game run. So um, that star can't be done. And then there's a handful of stars that I'll point out when I get to them. Uh, most stars in this category aren't actually heavily affected by the restrictions, at least in terms of speedrunning. Um, and honestly, a few of them aren't even affected casually that much. Some stars, it's just a matter of going out of your way to dodge coins, and other stars do have some workarounds that are required in order to skip caps and cannons. But for example, yeah, this big bob on star is uh, not a star you would normally see in 70 star, but we don't really have too many better options, so this star is kind of worth it. And it's not really affected at all with speedrun strats by the CCC list restrictions. Okay, so I do have one a minor choice in stars I can use for this route that I'm doing, and I'm actually going to elect to do the Cooper Race star here, even though that is a really, really slow star. And it is re I'm actually doing this in place of a potentially fast star, which is Blast Away the Wall and Wamp's Fortress. But the problem is that the cannonless setup for Blast Away the Wall uh, doesn't really work too well when you have to do it coinless. It's essentially just a crapshoot, and it almost never works. And sometimes it can just take way too long to be worth it for speedruns, so just for marathon safety, I'm going to do this star instead, because this star is kind of a freebie. Even though, again, it is quite lengthy. So again, the just like in regular categories, the faster you finish the race, the faster the Koopa the Quick will finish, so I just want to get to the flagpole as quickly as possible. And uh, I don't have to worry about opening the cannon in this category since I can't do that, but uh, just for the fun of it, because I have to wait for him to get to the top anyways, I'm going to beat him twice. 
and hopefully I don't accidentally grab this coin. Okay. And hopefully I, by the time I get to the top, I'll still be able to wait for him. Yeah, there he is. He's only halfway up the mountain here. I guess while I'm waiting here, I'll go ahead and explain something now if you've never watched an SM64 speedrun. You're probably going to notice me not saving after most stars. I'll probably do a few safety saves just for marathon safety. But um, that's because I'm playing on the Nintendo 64 version of the game, and um, this game does have lag, and so saving in this game actually wastes a few lag frames each time you do it. So by not saving after each of the stars, you can save a few frames over the... You save a few seconds over the course of the entire run, which definitely does add up. So that's Bob on Battlefield done. Those are the only four stars I can get. Mario Wings to the Sky is technically possible CCC list, but it's task only. And I don't even want to get into what you have to do in order to do it. So, it saves one second in castle movement to do a star from the Princess of Secret side before going to Womp's Fortress. So that's why I'm doing this star now. This star, for the most part, is not too bad. CCC list. The only real thing you have to worry about is the coins, which when doing the shortcut are quite difficult to dodge. Alright, but the shortcut you could do is still essentially the same. Alright, 13 0 is round average for me. And this category does kind of start off a bit slow compared to regular 70, but it will definitely pick up near the end because we have to do a lot of slower stars in replacement of the really fast coin stars. So again, Womp's Fortress, I could go for Blast Away the Wall, but I did the B.O.B. Cooper race instead. So um, this stage is going to go by pretty quickly. Um, the main difference with Womp's Fortress is actually right at the beginning for most of these stars. Uh, this first line of five coins, I'm going to do a bit of safer movement to go around. But for the most part, this level is still pretty much the same. We can still go for Owlis here, although I have to be mindful of this red coin. That's, yeah, that, that was not going to work. If I do accidentally grab any coins... Okay. If I do accidentally grab a coin, I'll just have to die or exit the level I'm in. And then um, I can re-enter and get the star coin list. Because the goal is to just not have... The goal is to not have it saved that you've collected any coins in any courses. And I do want to point out that you're probably... If you're familiar with SM64 glitches, then you're probably aware that there are infinite coin glitches. And in this game, if you collect a multiple of 256 coins, your coin score will save as zero. That does not qualify as coinless. Alright, so uh, these next two stars, aside from having to dodge that line of five coins, will be pretty straightforward. There is faster movement you can do, but I just don't like to do that because it's pretty easy. So King Womp is the same as ever, you just round pound three times to glitch through him. As always with any other category, tiny movement optimizations are especially important in this game. It might not seem like it at first, but that's where you're going to save most of your time. Although this is really, although since this is a meme category, it's obviously not taken as seriously. I'm pretty sure there's like less than 10 times on the leaderboard for it. So this last star I'm going to play with a zoomed in camera, and I also saved it for last for the same reason. The fortress lags the game a lot, so I want to prevent that lag as much as possible. Alright, so uh, this will be our last star we collect here. If I collect any coins, I either have to die or exit the level, and then retry it. So here is a level you do not normally see in 70 Star at all. Uh, we're going to go to Jolly Roger Bay, and we're actually going to get all five non-coin related stars here. And that's really just because, again, we don't have any better options. So uh, only a couple stars here are affected by the restriction, though. So, I'm going to be using a lot of weird camera angles in Dry Roger Bay, because um, there's a lot of lag present in this level, and I want to reduce as much of it as possible. 
So I'm gonna go for a trick here called ship clip. The geometry at the corner of the ship is weird, and so sometimes you can kind of just clip through the corner of it with precise enough swimming. It's kind of tricky though. Nice, I got it. That's actually really, really hard, and I don't get that very often. I actually got the insta clip, which is really rare. So I just gotta open four chests in a specific order. Obviously, there's nothing to worry about here because there's no coins here. So I'll go ahead and explain the next star. So the next star I'm gonna go for is Blast to the Stone Pillar. And you probably, if you know this game, you'll know that that's the star you need the cannon for. There are two different ways you can get the star cannon list. One is by using frame walking to climb up a pillar, but I can't do that. So instead I'm gonna do a pretty precise long jump off the side of the ship. This is a, probably the hardest star in this category, just because this jump is really precise. And uh, the ship does operate on a cycle, and I already have had really slow movement, so I'm probably going to have to wait. Gotta be careful to not grab any of these coins. Alright, so I'll wait. I have to wait for the ship here to be in a good orientation. The lag doesn't make this any easier. Alright, I got it first try. Nice. That jump is way easier said than done. Here we go. But uh, that's that's really the only tricky star in JRB. The rest of them aren't too bad. So for this next star, Treasure of the Ocean Cave, I'm going to go for a pretty weird clip that you probably don't understand very well. So basically, when Mario swims into a stealing hitbox, he gets moved downwards. So um, the hitbox of this steep floor is actually really thin. So I'm able to clip into it with a good enough swimming speed, and then enter the ceiling hitbox of the cave. Like so. And it just down warps me into the cave. That saves very little time, but it's super easy to do. So it's worth it. And I just gotta make it through here. Again, not many stars are affected by the restrictions. Only a small handful of them are, and less of them are affected for speedrunning purposes. Uh, so the next star, this is a strat you normally see in 120 star speedruns, but if you've never played, if you've only played the game casually and haven't watched too many much 120 star, um, you're probably not familiar with this. You can, with um, optimal swimming, which is actually done by pressing A in a rhythm, contrary to what you might believe, you can actually swim through these jet streams and grab the stars without the metal cap. So if Mario is making that noise constantly when you're swimming, then you're doing the swimming optimally. So that's how I know. But yeah, that's a pretty standard strat. It's been around for decades. And the last star we have is the star from Unagi, the eel. Or Unagi, I don't really know how you pronounce it. But yeah, this one's also unaffected by the restrictions. I should probably mention version differences. So again, I am playing on the N64 version. I'm using the English card. I don't exactly know what the differences are for um, English and Japanese for this category. I know um, English is faster in regular 70 star, but Japanese probably would have advantages in this category for a couple of reasons. Text is slower on the Japanese version. There's just less of it in some areas, but Peach doesn't read her letter in the opening dialogue in the opening sequence, which saves like a couple seconds. And the Blast of the Stone Pillar star on that level isn't in a box. So, um, that saves a little bit of time. But I don't own a Japanese cart, so we're just gonna uh, stick with uh, the English cart. So, um, we have to do the slide again, and uh, it's not as... It's not, it's not as... What am I trying to say? English is a hard language. It's not any less terrifying than it was the first time. That's what I was trying to say. And I got 13 out twice in a row. Cool. So, one annoying part about this category is the light that you get for entering Tower of the Wing Cap, which appears at 10 stars. Um, so I have to use Mario Cam there to reduce lag every time it happens. Uh, 
And uh, now we're going to Bowser the Dark World. Because this is, again, CCC list, I can't get the red point star here, but that also means this level is going to go by quite a bit faster. The only difficult parts are dodging this set of coins. And then uh, this uh, line of coins right here. And uh, after that, the rest of this level is pretty simple. There's also, thankfully, no cycles I need to worry about. So I'm going to take this path instead. Okay, that was close. And the last tricky part is I have to... Okay, if I don't do that, I have to long jump around this red coin. And there we go. And uh, Bowser, the only, really the only way you could actually choke these Bowser fights is by, um, is by having him breathe fire, which shouldn't happen. And I just epically missed that throw. All right, there we go. So yeah, even though you can't save coin scores and secret courses, you still have to complete them pointless. So they abide by the same restrictions. That's it for that level. So next up, I'm going to go to Cool Command, and you're going to find this hilarious, but you can only get two stars here um, without tool assistance. Because there are coins blocking the entrance to the chimney, and no matter how you try to enter the chimney, you're going to grab them. And um, there are ways to avoid them, but they require clipping through the mountain in really stupid ways, so we're just not going to bother with either of the two stars, which means we can't enter the slide at all. So the only two stars we can actually get here are Wall Kicks Will Work and Little Penguin Lost. Thankfully, though, neither of those two stars are effective. And uh, that star... And that star, again, is pretty straightforward. When you roll out from a dive or a slide kick, you don't take fall damage regardless of how far high you fall from. So that's really helpful for that star. And then this star, again, pretty much the same. So after he, so these are the only, again these are the only two stars I can collect in CCM. So up next is uh, Big Blue's Haunt BBH, and uh, this is one of the scariest levels in this category. So one of the stars in here is not possible non-task. I die in the secret room, but I will be getting the other four non-coin collecting stars. And uh, Go on a Ghost Hunt is one of the scariest stars in this run because each boo contains a blue coin, but you only have a small window of time to get away from the boo before the blue coin becomes collectible. And uh, you have to be really quick here. And there's a lot of really tight spaces you have to maneuver in, so this first boo right off the bat is really scary. I have to use a pretty specific setup here to... Oh. Okay, that didn't go as I planned, so... I have to be careful so I don't accidentally collect that red coin. That boo isn't as bad. And uh, the only really scary part now is the last two boos. I have to kill these boos right away and I have to get away from them extremely quickly. So uh, hopefully this goes well. Alright, we're good. And then the rest of the star is uh, pretty straightforward. And uh, next, uh, uh, we're going to do the merry-go-round star. And this star is equally as scary because... Uh, because uh, coins, uh, they take a while to despawn. So, um, whenever I kill each of the five boos, the blue coins are going to linger on the merry-go-round for quite some time. So what I'm going to do instead is um, I'm going to uh, kill these boos in such a way that their coins all just kind of stay in that one spot. And then as long as I don't go near that one spot, I'll be good. This unfortunately means that this last boo is gonna, the big boo is gonna take some time to spawn. Uh oh. 
Okay. I thought I was gonna accidentally grab some coins there. Alright, this might grab the star. Nice. And the last two stars are um, pretty simple and don't require me going near any points at all. And uh, they're both stars you see in regular 70 star. So that's one of them. And uh, encoding overload, I apologize for that. And the last one we're going to do is Big Blue's Balcony, again a regular 70 star. Oh, messed up my movement there. So, we're out of the scary level now. And now it's on to basement. I apologize for any lagging issues. Uh, that I had uh, the way I was streaming was killing my CPU usage, so that's why that was happening. So, uh, basement portion of this run is not horribly bad um, in terms of the CCC list restrictions, but there's still some pretty hard tricks in this category, nonetheless. Uh, first, we have to catch Mips. So grabbing him with a punch like that is actually slightly faster than grabbing him with a dive, because Mario doesn't have to do the getting up animation. So coming up, we're going to do shifting sand lamp first. I'm going to go for a really hard trick called Pluralist that requires grabbing a bloated bob bomb, gra holding it in a way called hands-free holding, and then using a hands-free bloated bob bomb to clip through the top of the pyramid without opening the pillars. This is a really complicated strat. All right, I got the medium bomb there. You can get it with that bomb size, but I didn't want to risk it. So we're going to do a stand tall in the four pillars instead, which I would have done anyways. So this is a difficult trick called Topless. Okay, and I got a first frame wall kick there, so I couldn't get in. This is a pretty simple backup, though. So this is the star you're actually supposed to get on, stand on the four pillars for. But I just entered the pyramid through the bottom and did that instead. And we have to fight Irock. Three hits to each hand and we're done for. So the way the bloated bomb bomb physics work, you saw me do it for a bomb clip earlier in the run. Basically, when a bomb bomb's about to explode, it bloats for four frames. And if you grab it during any of those four frames, its hitbox infringes with Mario's hitbox and pushes him backwards. So that's how I'm able to uh, use it to gain strange backwards momentum. And uh, I'm trying to grab it on the fourth possible frame, which is uh, the biggest size you can grab it at. Alright, so I'll give this some more tries. There we go. There we go. So that's pillarless. And that actually makes it a lot easier to grab that star coinless, because... Both get it, going on all four pillars and calming the paraben normally is very hard to do coinless. And now we have to get the star from Klepto. This is another really hard star to do coinless with the speedrun strats. Because uh, this long jump from the pillar has to be really precise to not grab the coin on top of it. And then I also have to land on the fly guy because that was executed perfectly. Alright, this jump to the star is really scary. I played it safe. If you overshoot that star, it's easy to land in that line of coins behind it. And all that work you did was for nothing. And last star is, uh, I don't think I really need to say anything about it. I will say though, as you probably know, you can do a double jump onto a, onto a steep slope like that and then do a triple jump off of it. 
to climb it. And that's SSL. So, uh, Pyramid Puzzle is technically possible, but, uh, you'll get to see that after this run, since it's too hard to be done RTA. And that'll be the 71st star I showcase after this run. So, Leave the Lava Land, um, pretty, uh, typical stage. Uh, I did not want to take damage there. Alright. Getting into the Volcano is really tricky to do. Pointless. Alright, so I can't do Lava Boost now, because I can't use coins to heal, so I'm gonna do the Elevator Star instead. I have to do slightly different movement to get to the star here. Because I can't do the regular movement because that goes through coins. So I can't use the wing cap for red hot log rolling since caps are banned. So I have to do a strat that you only really see in 16 star where you triple jump wall kick onto the cage next to where the log is. Yeah, that was a really bad attempt. I have to try that again. There we go. So that strat is actually done in other categories, but you rarely get to see it unless you're watching 16 Star. That's pretty cool nonetheless. It's nice to show off. So now I'm going to re-enter the volcano to try to get the other volcano star. I'm going to go for the lava boost trick, you see. But I have to be extra careful because there's coins all over the volcano. Alright. Oh, and I can't go for lava boost now. So now I have to play it super duper slow to get up the volcano. Without... Okay, and I grabbed a coin, so I'm just going to have to die. It's okay because I'll respawn right back in the volcano, so I barely lose any time from that. And I get to try Lava Boost again. Alright, here we go. There we go. But now I have to dodge this line of five coins here. I'm gonna grab this ball first just for safety. There we go. We're all good. So yeah, it's really hard to dodge coins in some areas, and going off the volcano is a nightmare. It's really slow too. And the only two stars left I can do here are the bully stars. And I'm basically just going to be doing the same movement for either of them. I'm going to play it a little bit safer than you would see regular RTA runners do because of that coin. So I wouldn't normally do that movement, but that one coin is really difficult to dodge with, with, with the optimal movement. So just for safety, I opted to do something different. And this last star is definitely one of the scariest in the run as well, because it's the one where you take on the three individual bullies. You can't... Each of the bullies spawns a coin when they're dropped into the lava, so you can't really just do the quick kill strat you can do on the regular star, because there's also a ring of eight coins right next to where the star would spawn. So I have to be really, really careful here. So I'm actually going to take on each of these bullies individually. Uh, contrary to what you would see most speedrunners do. This is still incredibly scary. Right, now I gotta take on the big bully. Again, I'm just gonna lower him over there like that. <sighs> I meant to kick there. Now I have to redo this star. I have been told you have donation streets, so I'll go ahead and let you read them while I read you the star. Awesome. Uh, thank you. So yes, we have $15 from Jessica G. Parrish. We also had $70 from Roman Arrow 12. We have $20 from Frodan for the message that says Frodan 2 of Cherry. And we also have uh, $150 from Nana's. Which was a donation sent for me to dab uh, 200 times later in the later in the stream today. So I'll see you guys. In the All right, this time I'm waiting for the star to spawn before I jump to it. There we go. That was a really unfortunate mistake. Having to die, having to die because of getting coins twice in that level is not very fun. But we're out of there. 
So I'm gonna save uh, Hazy Maze Cave for later because I'm gonna want to come back to basement when I have 50 stars. And we're gonna head to Dire Dire Docks. Uh, there's only really a couple of scary instances in this level that involve swimming around coins, but if you know what you're doing and you're keeping track of what you're doing, then it's not really a hard thing to do. So first I'm gonna do the chest star. And uh, there's one place where it's I have to be really careful to dodge a coin. And it's for this second chest right here. Okay, there we go. That might have looked weird to you, but um, you can touch anywhere on a chest to open it as long as you're facing the front of the chest. But, uh, that star was executed successfully. And uh, I'm gonna, similar to 120 star, I'm gonna be splitting DDD up into two trips um, because uh, the submarine in the second room lags the game a ton. I'm gonna get one additional star in that later area. So I'm getting the sub star now. I'm gonna be turning the camera a lot again to reduce lag. All right, so this ring of eight coins, I just have to go a little bit out of my way to avoid. So uh, getting this star will spawn the entrance to Bowser in the Fire Sea, um, where I'll be getting the second key. And uh, Bowser in the Fire Sea has um, elevators midway through the stage that are on a cycle, and if I play fast enough, I can make it through that set of elevators without having to wait. And again, I don't have to collect the red coin star here, so this level will go by a lot faster than you're used to. But making this early cycle is a lot harder to do when you have to avoid coins. So I uh, hope I'm gonna need a little bit of time to focus here, so hopefully this goes well. I've only ever made this cycle coinless like one time. Okay, so I'm pretty sure it's dead now because of that ledge grab. You basically have to have perfect movement. So, um, I don't really want to take damage in this level because, um, there is some lava boosting strats I'm going to want to do later. Alright, this upcoming line of five coins here is, uh, kind of scary to dodge. I kind of have to just go around them like so. And now I can just skip the rest of this level by just long jumping on the side here. And I can just lava boost directly into the loading zone to Bowser. Now, in terms of Bowser throws, this one is one of the easiest ones to make, but it's also the scary. It's also it's also um, the worst one to miss because when Bowser does this attack, I actually can't grab him again. So um, that would really suck if I threw him off the edge. But that was a perfect throw. And a fun fact: of the three Bowser fights, this is the only fight where Bowser's fire will not spawn coins. So you actually can't get infinite coins in this level. But we're not quite done with basement just yet, because there are two stars in DDD left that I want to get. So, the first one I'm going to get is the Manta Ray star, which is again a regular 70 star. And, um, the visual, due to a bug in the game's code, the visual orientation of these rings doesn't match their physical orientation. So these hitboxes are really weird. So if I don't get through these first five, then we're going to have a problem. Okay, I, we are going to have a problem. So, thankfully, I have a backup star which is why I didn't do that star last. So I'm just going to go ahead and get the Jetstream star, which I would have gotten anyways. And uh, just like the Jetstream in Jolly Roger Bay, I can just swim through the Jetstream to get the star. Um, you can actually skip the Metal Cap entirely. You don't need it to get all 120 stars in this game. So this should be good. I missed a ring, so my cycles were a little bit off. But I should be able to get the star with this. Yeah. So in a 120 star run, you don't even have to press the metal cap switch. Because any star that requires the metal cap, you can just skip it. Alright, last try at the Manta Ray star. Alright. 
Alright, there we go. And uh, that'll be it for DDD. Collect the caps is technically possible, but the method for doing it is really, really stupid and hilariously inconsistent. So, uh, I'm just not going to do it. And uh, now we're going to be heading upstairs for a little while. So Wet Dry World is the level where, of course, the height at which you enter the painting determines the initial water level. Um, this is another star where there is a star that is technically possible, but the setup for it is really, really stupid and takes forever, so we're not going to do it. So I'm only going to be getting four of the five possible stars here. So we're going to start, I'm going to do the secrets, which is normally paired to the 100 coins in a regular 70 star. But, uh, now we just got to do secrets by themselves, which is, loves a pretty cool movement. Uh, there's only one minor alteration I have to make to my movement to, uh, dodge coins, and it's coming up. I'm going to be wall jumping off this wall and going to the left instead of the right, so that I can avoid that ring of eight. And, uh, there we go. Alright, that was a really good secret. <clears throat> so the next star, I'm going to go for a um, rather precise triple jump wall kick to get onto the elevators without needing to press that exclamation mark switch. Um, this is a somewhat precise trick that saves around 3 seconds. And I'm also going to do a cool little strat and start here where I break this box during the triple jump. Alright, I had a bad angle there, so I couldn't get that, but luckily I didn't lose too much time to it. And instead of riding the elevator all the way up, I can just wall kick up the shaft. Okay, my angle was a little bad there, but still worked. And uh, the rest of these stars aren't really affected by the restrictions. Next, I'm going to do top of the town. I'm going to enter on the medium water level so I can get a long jump bounce off this heater at the start. You could go for the triple jump walk here, here, but it saves like a second, so for me it's not worth it. Plus I get to do this cool movement. And it's even riskier because you could fall in the water if you mess it up. Now we just have one more star left to get in Wet Dry World, and it's a star I like to give a lot of crap for, because uh, there's like 18 different ways you can skip the arrow lifts in the star, and this is the one Nintendo overlooked the most. You just take the warp, and uh, there you go. So, a good level design. And, uh, coming up next is Tiny Huge Island. There's the two different entrances. Just like in every other category, I'm only going to be entering through the big entrance, through the small painting. Because it takes too long to get to the big painting. So the first one I'm going to do is Secrets. But this is probably not a route you're familiar with. Because the regular route is just way too hard to perform pointless. In fact, I don't even know if it's possible. So, uh, this is a slightly slower but easier route. In fact, this is a route I'd recommend beginners use when starting out the game for the first time. Okay. Uh, this is sketchy. Okay, we're good. Okay, that was a bit sketchy, but we made it work. And now I just have to do the jump to the star, which is harder because the setup is not what I'm used to. Okay, we're good. So, um, the rest of these stars aren't really affected too much by the coinless restriction, other than there's some movement getting to the pipe here that's a bit harder to perform. That movement's a bit scarier, so here I'm gonna go for a wiggle or clip. So, that steep floor, again, has a really thin hitbox, so with good speed and an uh, angle mark, you can just clip through it. And when you enter a body of water, you automatically are upward to the surface, regardless of where you enter it from. So that's how I was able to skip into Wiggler's loading zone there. Again, this is a star you don't normally see in 70s star, but we don't have a whole lot of options here.
and a boss fight with Wiggler again, pretty simple. So I'm actually going to be going for that same mountain clip again on uh, the tip top of the huge island star. Um, the way I do it doesn't really save time over just going the intended way, but the only reason I'm doing it is so I can dodge a line of five coins I'd otherwise have to find a way to get past. Something I also haven't brought up yet is I'm actually holding left for the most part on those star select menus because it sets a counter to where um, when the save text prompt when the save text prompt comes up after collecting a star, I can just hold down and it will immediately scroll to continue don't save. There we go. So there I had to do that mountain clip a second time. And uh, last, next up is the Piranha Plant Star. Um, the movement for the star is the same, I just have to be a little bit careful, because uh, since coin spawns are RNG dependent, uh, mainly the movement that they take on, I do have to be careful with uh, which direction these coins move in. Alright, this last Piranha Plant is really the only one I have to worry about, and uh, its coins went nowhere near me, so we're good. And the last star I have to do here is the rematch with Koopa the Quick. So either way, I would have raced Koopa the Quick in this run. And this star, again, is not affected. Aside from the very beginning, but that's not much of a change I have to make. Right, I'm going to do slightly slower movement to get into that pipe. So we're going to make Koopa the Quick kind of look like a joke here yet again. So the last time I beat him twice... Um, in the amount of time it took for him to get the mountain once. Now I'm gonna head down here and just uh, steal a Koopa shell and just ride this all the way to the goal because this is slightly faster than just taking the intended path. And it's also safer because you don't go near any coins. So yeah, THI, a bit of a slow stage in this category, but at least the five stars here are uh, worth it. Here we go. And uh, next up is going to be Tall Tall Mountain, but first we have one of the hardest stars in the game. Oh my goodness, how does he do it? So I'm going to use that, the same uh, steep floor clip and uh, water upwarping physics you saw in THI to uh, basically skip half the mountain here. And I have to go for this a total of three times. So I'm going to cut to the steep floor and get warped up to the second high body of water. This wall wall kick saves like a second and it's terrible if you miss it. And using some more jump trickery, we can just make it all the way up to the top of the mountain in like 20 seconds. I do have to do that movement two more times, though. And uh, next is a star, again, you do not normally see in regular 70 star. It's the one you get from Yukiki. And I have to do that same movement again. In case anybody's wondering, you have five frames to perform a wall kick when you bonk on a wall. So I have five frames to time every wall kick. So I'm going to do a bit of an interesting glitch here. I'm going to grab Yukiki like normal, but then I'm going to jump onto the slope. And if I hit free him while holding him on the slope, I don't automatically let him go. So I'm going to ground pound here, and uh, he's just going to be all ready to go. And that skips most of him walking down the mountain. And the last star I have to get is the breathtaking view from Bridge Star, which is, again, not really affected by the coinless restriction.
next I'm going to do Blast of the Lonely Mushrooms. This is a strat that's done in speedruns anyway, but normally you need to use the cannon for the star. But there's a crazy box that you can use that can just barely allow you to reach the mushroom. And uh, so that's what I'm going to be trying to do here. This actually looks scarier than it is. Alright. <clears throat> And the last star I'm going to get is Mysterious Mountainside, and I'm going to go for the same sh uh, good old Riesless strat, where you use uh, Fence's one-way wall properties to clip inside the mountain, and then ground pound into the star compartment. This is a really tough strat, and I'm only going to go for it once. Alright, so you saw me get the clip there, but my angle wasn't too good, and I didn't get a whole lot of height. <clears throat> so I can instead just use this breeze here to uh, skip the entire slide, and just jump down here. That makes that star a lot easier, because going down the slide coinless is not something you really want to do. This is where the run's really going to start picking up in speed, by the way. So, I know it's been dragging on for quite a while, but we'll be getting some a bit faster. So, Snowman's Land, uh, only really one star here is scary, and it's the first one I'm going to do, Snowman's Big Head. Basically, if you fail the strike, you risk falling into a coin. There's only a small part of that wall you can wall kick off of, the rest is just ceilings. And you can't really wall kick off a ceiling, because it's not a wall. On this next star, you're going to see me utilize a technique I've used a few times in this run called a speed kick. To maintain momentum while kicking. And I just epically failed it. So you've probably seen, you've seen me do it a few other times, but basically when you land from a rollout, if you hold neutral and A upon landing from a dive rollout or any other fast movement, then the next time you press B, you can do a kick that preserves your momentum instead of a dive, which is useful for starting triple jumps. So, um, next two stars are really fast and really easy. And you don't even go near any points for them, so... Nothing to worry about. So after I'm done with uh, the last star here, I'm actually going to re-enter Snowman's Land and exit course, because I'm going to head all the way back down to the basement. Because now that I have over 50 stars, the second Nips, the rabbit in the basement, has spawned. And so I'm actually going to make a detour there to get him. And while I'm down there, I'm also going to clear out Hazy Maze Cave, since I didn't do that earlier. But that's it for Snowman's Land. Again, this is another level where into the igloo is possible. CCC list, but it's task only. So I'm going to re-enter here and exit course and then go all the way down to the basement. I have to remember again to go into Mario Cam there because of that light. This MIPS is slightly faster than the first one when playing on the English version of the game. Um, both, MIP, both MIPS are actually at the faster speed on the Japanese version of the game. But he's still easy to catch. And uh, after this we have another incredibly hard start. <laughs> Collision in this game is uh, questionable at best. Yeah, that was hard. So for, on this first star, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that there's a bunch of areas in Hazy Maze Cave where their ceilings just don't exist. So you can jump over walls and clip into other rooms. And I'm going to exploit that to um, the extreme on this first star by using an item block to just jump over a wall and end up in the cavern down below. Like so. I have to be careful when diving into the star here, because if I miss the star, I can risk diving into those coins. But we got it, so we're good. So the next star I'm going to do is a star you only really see beginners do in 70 Star, is uh, navigating the Toxic Maze. There's a really cool backwards long jump strap for this star that I would attempt if this weren't 70 Star, but I have to abide by regular 70 Star rules, so we're just going to do this the uh, old-fashioned way, where I have to go for this silly maze clip. And I'm probably going to miss it. Yeah, I missed it. You can clip through that wall there and skip uh, taking this elevator down. It only saves a few seconds.
And the only hard part left in this star is just dodging this line of five coins, which isn't even difficult. And there's no ceiling on the other side of that surface, so we can just clip through the ceiling there. Next, I'm gonna do navigating the tox. No, no, no. I already, I just did navigate the toxic maze. Amazing emergency exit, where I'm gonna utilize a pretty big shortcut to just skip everything in the star. I'm just gonna triple jump walk it to the star platform from this room. Now, next is Metalhead Mario can move, and you if you haven't seen speedruns of this game, you're probably thinking, don't you need the metal cap for that star? Well, just like every other star you normally need the metal cap for, um, you can skip the metal cap here, too. If you just fall onto the switch with enough downwards momentum, you can hit the switch while it's still in the water. And uh, to do that, I'm going to triple jump over, wall kick over this wall here to clip into the cavern. And uh, that should be high enough to where I can just land on the switch from here. Like so. And now I only have one star left, which is Watch for Rolling Rocks. This is actually a much scarier star than you'd think it'd be in this category, because there's one line of five coins that's somewhat tricky to dodge with the boulders coming by, but it shouldn't be too bad if I get good boulder RNG. I just gotta be careful here. Uh -oh. Okay. If that had knocked me back in a slightly different direction, I might have been knocked back into those coins, but we're good. <clears throat> So now, we can finally go upstairs and go to Tibby, which is where we'll be at finishing off the run. So I'm actually only going to be getting three stars in Rainbow Ride in this run. Um, because obviously I can't do red points. The only other two stars are somewhere over the rainbow, which is impossible non tass and the big house in the sky, which does anybody really want to do the carpet ride? I don't even think carpetless is possible, CCZ-less. Or at least coinless. As a matter of fact, for this first star, Cruiser Crossing the Rainbow, I'm not going to do the standard like Kiki Bounce strat that you see most runners do because it's actually not possible to do coinless. So, this is probably a movement you haven't seen in a really long time. I'm basically just utilizing the various level geometry to uh, get up to the cruiser without taking any of the carpets. This is the old strat runners used to use before like Kiki Bounce was the norm. This long jump's the hard part. Ugh, I missed it. Luckily there is a uh, backup strats. Alright, he made it up. So that's the only really different star without with uh, coinless restrictions imposed. The next two stars, I don't even go near any coins. Although, for this first star, I can still die with twice within the first eight seconds of the star, so hopefully this goes well. Alright, we're good. I just gotta make it up the triangles. Now the last star I have left is Swing in the Breeze, which again, I don't really go near any coins, so I don't have to worry about it. But this star is still really tricky because of the movement you have to do. <laughs> so that's it for Rainbow Ride, that was not too bad. Now the last course I'm going to go to is TikTok Clock, where once again I'm going to get all five non-coin collecting stars. I'm going to enter on the 12th here. This is a stomp on the swamp by itself. Uh, hopefully I do this well. Enjoy the movement. Uh, I'm already screwing this up. Alright, I actually, because I messed this star up, I'm actually going to... Uh, 
Um, I'm actually gonna bail on your time jumps on moving bars because I'd rather not mess up the movement for Stomp on the Thwomp. <laughs> well, the next couple stars I'm gonna enter on uh, time moving fast so I can do the triple jump wall kick moving up the spinners. This movement is a little bit risky in this category because you can sometimes grab a red coin during it if your positioning is really bad. But if I'm careful about it, I shouldn't have to worry about that. I have to do that movement a total of three times. So that's one down and two to go. Next up, I'm gonna do Stomp on the Swamp by itself, take two. I, I didn't want, I wanted to try it again because this is one of my favorite stars to do, and you don't really get to see it done by itself in many other categories because it's usually paired with 100 coin. So uh, let's try this again, and again, hopefully, you enjoy this. That line of five coins is the only really hard part. There we go. That was okay. The last star I have to do is roll into the cage, which is, again, the same as it is in just about any other category. And the last star I'm going to be getting is from Toad, because it saves time to do Toad after TTC. So I am actually going to do a safety save on this 70th star, just in case something, God forbid, something happens. And uh, with 70 stars, I'll be able to solve the mystery of the Endless Stairs somehow. Oh, I should probably clarify something about the capless restriction. Yes, Mario is allowed to wear his normal cap. I just told off all of you, and you didn't even realize it. So now we can go up the Endless Stairs and go to Bowser in the Sky, where the only really difficult part is the Triple Trump Wall Kick, and there's not really much to worry about in terms of pointless. So the triple jump wall kick's coming up. I'm going to do a non-moving left side just for safety. There's faster and harder strats in this. Okay. And I screwed that up. Luckily, I didn't fall into the coins. I have to wait for the arrow platform to get back up. the only, those are the only coin, oh my god. Well, sub one just became hard. We gotta do that a second time. Those are the only five coins that are hard to dodge. Alright, so I can still get sub one if I land all three throws here, but this is SM64, that's not gonna happen. And uh, time will be when I grab the uh, final Grand Star here, and then I'll do the 71st Star afterwards. That's one. Uh, yep, that's a miss. So there goes sub one. Uh, I 
actually don't remember if I saved or not on the 70th star, so uh, this might be problematic. Ah, uh, that's not gonna hit. Yeah, I was too far away. <clears throat> Thank God for invincibility frames. Alright, there we go. Oh! Okay, never mind, I thought that wasn't gonna hit. So time's coming up, it's when I touch the grand star. So, uh, in case you ever want to run this category, uh, don't. But, it's fun. Time. So my timer says 1.00.14. My Pete, that is 2 minutes and... No, actually that's 1 minute and 58 seconds off my PB. From 2018. So, I hope you enjoyed that category. It's kind of a neat take on 70 Star. And uh, I w we would sit through the credits, but uh, there is a donation incentive that has to be done. Now, I hope I remembered to save on Star 70. Okay, we're good. So, what is the 71st star I'm going to do? Well, uh, it is going to be Pyramid Puzzle in Shifting Sandland, because every other star is either hilariously inconsistent or takes way too long. So, this is a star that I think is theoretically fast enough to be in the route if you could do it well. So, the re so you're probably familiar that Pyramid Puzzle is the star where you collect the five secrets in the pyramid. The secrets hitbox, a secrets hitbox has the same radius as a coin's hitbox, but their hitboxes jut out slightly above the secret hitbox, above the coin hitboxes. So, with precise enough positioning, it's actually possible to collect each secret without touching the coins. I'm gonna use Pluralist to again get inside the pyramid. Alright, here we go. I have to be very precise with this. Okay. That's those three coins. Now I get to use Dive Rob to get these last two. Alright, here we go. This last coin is easy to choke to, so hopefully I can get this. We're past most of the hard parts now. I got a good lineup here. Okay, that's that's fine because I have as as long as I don't touch this coin, I have as many tries as this as I want. This is harder than it looks. You have to space this out just right. There we go. Alright, I have to keep holding a direction on the control stick because I couldn't bonk and recoil it back into the coin. Alright. That star is way harder than it looks and I just did it first try. Alright. So uh, that run had some sloppy bits throughout, but hopefully you got to enjoy that wacky category, and just to verify, yep, everything was done coinless. So uh, that's it for me, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I'm going to throw it on over to the host.